O oh Lord, we have come to praise you. Anoint my tongue to minister your healing, your peace to your people. Come, Holy Spirit, and renew us. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, we remember the saints of old, those who have died, we celebrate them, remembering their stewardship on this special day. We look at our collects prayer for the day. We pray to you for those we love, but see no longer. I know all of us sitting there this morning. There are many people that you love that you can see no longer. Shall we just, in a moment of silence, remember them? We remember them and pray that light perpetually will shine upon them. And for those of of us still in the race, may we be able to fight to the end and receive the crown through Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. If you look at our gospel reading for today, there are a lot of theological questions you can ask. But based on this week we celebrate the saints, there's a particular question about rising from the dead. And I know all of us in this building and those see any mean. We all know the importance of resurrection. Jesus died, and it's part of our creed. And on the third day, he did what? He did what? He rose. So I believe that question we already have the answer. And why did he rose again? To go and do what? To go and, to go and prepare a place for you and me. What does that say to you? Where we are now is not our home. We are just passing through. So don't build, don't become a landlord when God wants you to be a tenant in this world. Is coming back again. To do what? To take us back to himself. And that's the joy of our Christianity. And that's why we cry to all, repent from sin that can hinder you from going with him. But there's another part to the gospel reading of today when it comes to the place of marriage. In verse 33, now, on that day, when the dead rise to life, whose wife will she be? All seven of them are married. Jesus answered them, the men and women of this age marry, but the men and women who are worthy to rise from the dead live in the age to come will not then marry. I want you to see a gap here. In the age to come, when the King of Kings and Lord of Lords will come, there's no more marriage. Do you believe that? Our marriage is in this world. But it must be in accordance to God's plan and purpose. You read in the Bible, two we be on the bed. One will be taken, and the other will go to America. Right? Is that what the Bible says? Okay. Two will be in the plane. One will stay over there, and then one will come back to Shepherd Bush. So we have already got that message. 
And if you have not watched this um, film, you know, this Jesus' is, um, crucifixion and resurrection, it's good to watch it and see what people talk about the age to come. What Jesus is saying here is, we should not allow the present challenges in this world to deny us a place in the age to come. This world is not our own. This world is not our own. We are just passing through. If you are passing through, why are you becoming a gatekeeper? If you are passing through, why have you become the station manager? We are all passing through. And I want to say to somebody, travel light. Because there's a lot of things we all carry that we just have to drop. Because there's going to be a kind of measurement. And that is where you and I as Christians, we are being encouraged day by day to travel light. Are there things you need to remove from your load, your Christian journey? All those excesses of sin that can be like a weight of load on you, we need to do what? To remove them. Because you cannot go with it. Especially in a time like this, we are going through a war all over the world. What is that war? The war that is even more dangerous than Ukraine and Russia. You know the war? It's the financial war. It's the financial war that is making the poor to become poorer. Don't you know what happened to us? Yes, we are looking for a new prime minister that will make our economic work. Two or three of them tried and they left without getting it. But the moment the new person came, the second day, the global financial system, yes, UK economy is coming back. Who is deceiving who? Who is dictating bad or good economy? People of God, we are in the end time. Precious distraction will come. Don't be distracted. Hold on to the word of God. People will even tell you it doesn't matter. But remember, the Bible says two will be on the same bed. One will be taken. One will be left. Even we can be in the church and you could see some people just and you look around. So when we look at this word of Jesus, verse 34, the men and women of this age marry, but the men and women who are worthy to rise from death and live in the age to come will not then marry. There is no marriage in heaven. But your marriage here or not may hinder your marriage, your place in heaven. Because if you don't do it according to what God dictates, what's the message this morning as we take the communion? This word is temporal. This word is temporal. There's no need to fight on anything like these uh, Sadducees who, you know, who are questioning and asking questions, what Moses wrote, what did not, you know, number of wives, number of children, they will all pass away. But the only thing that can hold it to the hand is your encounter with God. Let me round up with this. The purpose of our creation. Why has God created you? Why has God created me? Number one, for me and you, in the image of God, to use our talents, to be like God. Some people, they inspire, they, you know, manufacture this. Someone did this, what I'm putting on. Some people do the planting, the crop we are eating. God has given us different talent and gifting to do what? To reproduce, to create. 
Are you a lawyer? Are you a doctor? Are you a nurse? They are all part of God's talent to do what? To reflect his glory, his image in creation. Therefore, there is no failure in any human being. We all have a seed of God in us to do something good in our generation. There is nothing God created without a purpose. Hello? Everything in this world, look at this left hand, what you are sitting on. Every, they have a purpose. Without this window, this place will be dark. Without the heater, this place will be cold. Sorry, it's not even warm as you expect it. Everything here has a purpose. Likewise, you and me, we have a purpose. And what is the second part? But the question is this. Don't just allow your purpose to dictate your only means of existence. Yes, I'm a pastor. I can be a pastor and still go to hell. The color does not make a monk. Wesley was licensed by the Church of England, but that, was, that could not qualify him until he felt his heart strangely warm. It is not the preaching that matters. It is your heart with God that matters. Why are we having failure? Good politicians, good economists as presidents. Even in my own country, our first president is a professor of law. Our president is a Hamid general. And for many years, he has been fighting the Boko Haram could not overcome them. In fact, they tried to attack him himself. So, the harm of flesh will fail. It is not the person we put in number 10 that matters. It is who is inside the man at number 10. It is not the deji that is preaching that matters. It is who is in deji that matters. Christ in me. Colossians 1.27, the hope of glory. And that's where the second part of God's purpose for you and me is important. What is that second part? God is a good God. God is not an isolated God. God is a, is a worshiping God. He wants somebody to be worshiping with him. He needs you to have a relationship with him. He needs you to have a counter with him. He wants you to have a kind of robust engagement, discussion, devotion together. When last? Have you sat at the feet of Jesus in all your business and said, Lord Jesus, I'm giving you today. It's me and you. And that's what Mary did, sitting at the feet of Jesus, but the other one was running up and down. What Martha was doing is good, but it is not the only thing that is good without sitting at the feet of Jesus. That's why Jesus said to her, Mary has taken the good parts, and no one can take it away. Hello, church. Office is not forever. Prime minister go, prime minister come, number 10 remains. Preacher come, preacher go, the church move on. But how you allow your gifting to now make you to have more contact with Christ, to bring him also to the kingdom matters. So, as we receive the communion this morning, thank God for the talent you have, but now ask God, I need to improve my fellowship with you. I need to increase my relationship with you in prayer, in devotion, in coming even to the house of God. You know when you come to this house of God, you do the cleaning, you are, you are engaging God, you are in a romance with God, your maker. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Don't just be gifted. You have a purpose and you have a goal. Shall we rise as we prepare for the communion? I believe we've all received the elements of bread and wine. We 
are the body of Christ. Please, can we increase the volume so that we, we are more than 20 here and the Lord will hear our voice. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another, wave it to one another with the greeting of peace in the name of Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you. Next slide, please. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you, gracious Father, our maker and sustainer. You created the heaven and the earth and formed us in your image. Though we sin against you, your love for us was constant. And you sent your son Jesus Christ to be the savior of the world. Sharing your human nature, he was born of Mary and baptized in the Jordan. He proclaimed your kingdom by word and deed and was put to death upon the cross. You raised him from the dead, you exalted him in glory. And through him, you have sent your Holy Spirit, calling us to be your people, a community of faith. And so with angels and archangels, and all the choirs of heaven will join in the triumphant in. Holy God, we praise you that on the night in which was betrayed, our Savior Christ took bread and gave it thanks. He broke it and gave it to a disciple, saying, Take it, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After I supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for all the people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, and proclaiming his eternal sacrifice. We offer ourselves to you in praise and thanksgiving as we declare the mystery of faith together. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Hallelujah. Send down your Holy Spirit that this gift of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Unite us with him forever and bring us with your creation to your eternal kingdom. Christ. With Christ, in the Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you in the song of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Together, though we are many. Shall we say together? Lord, we come to your table, trusting in your mercy, and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy even to gather up the crumbs under your table, but it's your nature always to have mercy, and on that we depend. So feed us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, that we may forever live in him and in us. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Those who come to me shall not hunger, and those who believe in me shall never thirst. Let us draw near with faith to receive the body 
and blood of Christ our Savior. As we pray over these elements, let us ask God to use this element to bring healing in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. United us with Christ and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet. Prepare for all people. Amen. Together, we receive the bread. Together, we receive the blood for our healing, for our peace, for the healing of this nation, healing of the world, for peace in Ukraine, peace in Russia, peace all over the world, peace in America, peace in Africa, peace in Ireland, peace in the United Kingdom, peace in Askew Road, peace in our family, peace in our place of work, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.